I had a giggle to myself um, a few days ago uh, because a friend of mine who I greatly admire, sorry, this is just a little bit high, so I'm making it just a teeny bit lower of myself, um, said to me, you know, Penny, it's all very well being weird, but nobody better be with my inner peace. I've worked so hard to get here. And actually, no sooner had I, had I giggled at her comment, then the universe started beeping with my sense of inner peace. And I have had one of those weeks. Uh, you know, Chris was in hospital for four days last week. Four routine tests. Um, <laughs> I hadn't realized how much it would press my buttons to be back in a hospital. And even more so because these are the kinds of tests that take a couple of weeks to come back. And I hadn't realized just how hard it would be to wait for results. Um, those of you who have been through someone with cancer in your family will know the feeling uh, whilst you are waiting for results and you say to yourself, oh, it'll never be as bad as I can imagine, only to find out that oncologists can dream up horrendous things that, uh, yeah, what's the, what's the Shakespeare line? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I dreamt of in your philosophy. Cancer teaches you that. I have a couple of friends who are close to mental breakdown and aren't handling it in the way that controlling Penny would think is the right way to do it. Um, and I'm finding that quite hard to cope with. And it all kind of topped out yesterday when, or, or earlier in the week when um, Chris didn't do so well in one of his subjects and a teacher who has written in his last three reports during all the hell that he has been going through that the way for Chris to improve in this subject is to prepare better for tests uh, wrote me another note when I said to him well like what are you suggesting that we do to help him and I got he should prepare better than te in tests um, I then responded in my typical corporate way with some specifics that I would like him to do, which he uh, retrospectively analyzing his exam results to understand what is going wrong. And he, I got told he would do it in the future. So you can imagine that my response had a lot of uh, language that you maybe wouldn't expect <laughs> from somebody who has devoted the last 10 years of their life to the world of happiness. Luckily, I, how's it Mel? Um, luckily that my, my dear husband who, um, whose tact skills are rather more developed than mine, uh, saw my draft and, and drafted a much better, more constructive email. But it has been one of those weeks and I know you're all thinking about it. The universe, it's been beeping with my inner peace. So I thought what I might talk about today is what do we do when the universe is, hello Sandra, it's so good to see you, uh, when the universe decides that they are going to mess with you. It is going to mess with you. I don't know. They, who, what? What do we call the universe? Um, and always you will remember that the person who first got me really, really interested in the whole positive psychology and happiness as a science world was a man called Sean Atchell, whose TED talk I talk about all the time. But if you still haven't watched it, go Google Sean Atchell uh, TED talk. Um, and he talks about five things that we can do to restore happiness in our lives and in fact his point is that we need happiness before success um, and that's kind of a key point actually when you think about it because often we treat success like any other goal um, that you know where once I have happiness I will be successful and therefore I will be happy but actually we just want to get on with the happiness bits and pieces uh, as usual the dogs are in the background uh, barking furiously at, I think there's another dog going for a walk. Uh, you can hear it being crazy back at them in the background if you listen carefully. But the five things that Sean Atchell really talks about is meditation, journaling, exercise, acts of gratitude, 
an act of kindness and gratitude. Now, I don't know about you, but what, when I am feeling miserable, my instinct is to curl up in a ball in bed and make the world go away. Um, and certainly that I know is not actually a really useful technique. It might be my instinct, but it's not the one that is sort of science-backed. Can you hear the dogs going crazy? Well, well hopefully the microphone on this is good enough that uh, <laughs> I, I thought I'd choose a spot because it's so calm and peaceful. And then all the dogs in the neighborhood have started barking at the same time. Um, you know, when I'm feeling miserable, when somebody has really, really pushed my buttons, the last thing on earth I want to do is go and sit still for 40 minutes and think of nothing or, you know, write a journal piece on this. So I thought about, well, let me go back a step, is at the same time this week, I downloaded the audio book of Atomic Habits. Mm, I've forgotten the author, which is really bad of me as an author. I will put it in the notes. Um, and I was a bit sniffy when I read it because really what the, he's done is he's taken one of the chapters out of Dan and, Heath, uh, Dan and Chip Heath's book, uh, Switch, uh, where they have a technique called Shrink the Difference. And what he's done is he's taken that and applied it to our own happiness. So I was a bit sniffy because it was like, nah, it's nothing that I haven't seen before. But actually, when I think about it, taking things and breaking them down into the smallest possible unit of measure is one of the, te one of the things that we can do to build new habits. So my thinking this week was, well, what if I applied that to myself at the moment as a kind of first aid technique? So I want to tell you what I've been doing and give you, you know, the, as ideas for when are those moments when you feel like the world is getting at you, you know, your boss is being a beep, uh, <laughs> your colleagues are being annoying and haven't done what they said they were going to do, or you're just in my case and something unexpected hits you out of this you know comes out of left field so you know when chris went into hospital it was routine tests it's an eeg from the seizure they had in october uh, and really just uh, it's a follow-up eeg uh, a more in-depth eeg but really it was just to for us to clarify you know we were sort of pretty sure that the seizure had been caused by a compounding of fatigue and a medication but as you know my bestie is a neurologist and she was like yeah pretty sure it's not going to cut it uh chris is coming in he's having the full monty 72 hour eeg where we shine strobe lights in his eyes and we keep him awake all night um, we're going to rule out any kind of seizures or kind of, you know, brain misfunction. And it's an awesome hospital. She's created this amazing neurological unit. Um, but it's weird things, you know. It's, it, it's uh, run by the same group as the, the hospital that Josh was in for his cancer treatment. So the nurses wear the same uniform. I mean, how crazy is that? But all of a sudden, I went from being somebody who has worked really hard for a long time and had sort of got to a point where she was like, you know, it had gone from, you know, rainy to, you know, partly cloudy with a strong chance of rain in my life recently, um, to like full out hurricane last week. Um, to the point where you will have noticed I've been kind of quiet. Um, and really that was because I was pretty non-functional for quite a lot of the time last week. Um, because this just kind of came out of left field. I just, I didn't expect something like that to just hit me so hard. So anyway, having read Atomic Habits, I thought, well, you know what? Let's give this kind of micro habits thing uh, it's the advice that I've been giving to my coaching clients for years. Often when they've said, I can't do that, the question I ask them next is, well, what is the smallest step that you could take towards making progress? So I thought, you know what, maybe it's time to take a little of your own advice. And I thought, well, you know, sitting and meditating at the moment for me, that is really just not an option. I can't, you know... My instinct is to want to just go to sleep for the full time. Um, 
uh, <laughs> and now Rod is shouting at the telephone in the background. Um, uh, so what I wanted to do, um, sorry, I've been distracted. <laughs> um, what I wanted to do instead of medication, I was thought, well, what could I do that would be something that I could do in a micro thing that would help me? And one of the things that I realized is I remembered this article that I read recently that said, you know, meditation isn't about the staring at the candle or the running away from Buddhist retreat, which I have done. Uh, it can be something as simple as just resting. And in fact, when we just take a moment and stop is often when we have our best strategic ideas. So for people who want to do strategic thinking, one of the best things you can do is stop. I thought this would be a good place to stop, but there is traffic like I've never heard before. Road was shouting in the background, the dongs have been going crazy. This is not a good spot for meditation and stopping. I apologize. Um, but we're here, so let's carry on. So I have in my studio where I do my writing, I have actually a David. So this weekend what I did was I went and bought myself a really comfy pillow with a really beautiful pillowcase and I generally have uh, an energy dip in the mid-afternoon it's where one set of meds uh, you know ends off and another set of my meds uh, takes off you know I've taken them but they haven't quite kicked in yet so I generally have a dip in the mid-afternoon anyway um, so I thought, you know, that's the perfect time. So I have been taking like a 20 to 30 minute sleep. I don't generally find it easy to sleep in the day. You know, I'm not like my husband. My husband really is a power napper. He can have a five minute between meetings and he can lie down and sleep for five minutes and get up refreshed. I don't do that. Uh, but I rest for 20 minutes. Uh, and I would recommend to you, even if it's five minutes, rest. Uh, and, you know, I, I had a friend when she was pregnant, he used to pop down to the car park at lunchtime and take 10 minutes just lying on the back seat of her car. Uh, rest. So meditation doesn't have to be this hard thing that you're doing in a studio with one of those impossibly uncomfortable cushions or benches. It can just be rest. Take a moment to stop and daydream because daydreaming is good for us and it's calming. So that is tip number one. The second thing that Sean Atchwood tells us to do is journal. And again, writing uh, has been really hard for me recently. Uh, I took off a month in January from my normal writing routine um, to launch the book. And it's been remarkably difficult to get back into it. So. Uh, one of the things that I realized was that for me, my writing as an author is, it's not journaling, but it helps me focus away from myself and onto the story, you know. For those of you who's, who are writers, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, you'll know that it isn't this kind of great inspiration thing. It's, it's largely a technical exercise. You, you start off with this wonderful inspiration of a story, uh, but then there's the whole lot of technical aspects. You know, I can't be in Paris one minute and the next minute in New York. I have to let the reader know how I got there. Um, so it's a good way of taking myself out of myself, but it, it was beyond me in the last couple of weeks. So that is why I am on Facebook, doing Facebook Lives. For me, this is a form of journaling. And so making little videos, working on things that take me out of myself, um, has been a good way of journaling. So one of the things you'll realize is that though often I'm talking about anxiety and I'm talking about funny things, this, what I'm doing now, it's a journal. So again, use technology, make videos of yourself, make voice memos, tap it out in the notes. I'm just waving goodbye to Rhoda, who's heading off. She's had yet another death in her family, which was what we woke up to this morning. Uh, 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 um, not not a close member of a family, but a member of a family OD'd on, on a drug called Noape, which I don't know whether they have in other countries, but it's a scourge in, in, uh, in South Africa. So she is rushing off to be with her family. Um, that's what the loud telephone calls are with her about. 
so uh, I can see that the sun has come up behind me. I'm quite liking the streaming effect. I hope it's not distracting for you. So that's journaling. Use technology, you know, record a voice memo, even if it's just about how pissed off you are, uh, even if it's how the world is just beeping with your inner peace. Um, one of the things that I do try and do for myself uh, you know, lots of people swear by the morning pages. The morning pages is a technique that Julian Cameron came up with that was like, before you do anything else in the day, write two pages of everything that is in your head to get everything out. Uh, I am not one of those people because, uh, that it's worked for because I'm a ruminator. So when something bad happens, like that science teacher, I lie all night long and even with all the medication last night I spent between two and three lying in bed thinking about all the violent things I would like to do to this man because uh, whilst my son is just another kid in his class he is the center of my solar system my universe uh, you know, I used to have a twin star solar system, now I've only got the one sun, so uh, do not mess or mama bear is going to come out. So uh, I spent lots of time last night uh, trying to get my, retract my claws and get back to sleep. So doing things like a Facebook um, and writing about those feelings is something that just is a rumination for me. It, it just sets me up for an awful day. Uh, I know it works for loads of people, so try it if it works for you. For me, uh, recording things, bizarrely as it is for such an introvert, I really love Facebook Lives. Um, I don't know what it is about this medium, but it's something that really works for me. So this is one of the things that I do kind of as a, uh, kind of as a reflection, kind of as a way to... Uh, cheer myself up and hopefully share some of the things that are cheering me up. So when it comes to journaling, don't think it has to be in a moleskin journal. In fact, if you love beautiful journals, check out my, my uh, friend's Facebook, uh, have, but give them a bit of a plug. Uh, they're called Impress. They're actually on next door. One day I'll show you a picture of their amazing uh, print museum. But they do hand printed beautiful print work. And one of the things that they have done is they have partnered with new artists and created these beautiful, beautiful journals. Uh, more beautiful than anything Moleskine is ever going to sell you. Um, and are quite inspiring things. I bought one. Uh, well, I was gifted one from them, actually. Um, somebody else has come online, but I can't see who you are. Hello, good morning. Um, but beautiful things will help you. Uh, exercise. So, uh, I feel like I've sort of gone around in a circle somewhere. But anyway, exercise. If you are somebody who's a comrades runner, I have a friend who's a comrades runner. She spends, I think, an hour on the road every morning. It's her way of coping. And if that is your thing, if you're a gym bunny, if you are someone who swims the mid mile, mile uh, by all means, do those things. Exercise is an amazing way of restoring your um, your happiness, even if it is, even if you're a couch potato like me. So um, I am not a runner. Uh, I tried running once and what I got was an injury <laughs> that lasted uh, for, I've just kind of shifted it now, so it's lost, it, it lasted uh, nearly a decade, <laughs> uh, an Achilles tendon injury, despite treatment after treatment after treatment, it just didn't ever get better, I was in pain, um, and so, you know, running isn't for me. Um, and in fact, at the moment, just because I feel overwhelmed, and often when the universe beeps with us, we feel overwhelmed, sitting, going anywhere that's out of our way, going to go do something for an hour or 40 minutes, it's not on the cards. So again, thinking about the tiny habits, I asked myself, what's the smallest thing that I can do? And I remembered that a, a personal trainer friend of mine years ago had designed a one hour program that I would make last six hours. So how it worked was that she gave me three exercises to do every hour. So they take about five minutes. So for example, the first exercise is 24 sit-ups on the yoga ball, followed by uh, 24 squats, followed by 24 
I don't know what you call them. You put your arms above your head with an elastic band and stretch from side to side. I don't know what that exercise is called. And so on and so on. So that I could, my aim for her was like, I really never make it to the gym, but what's something I can do? I don't have to change into gym clothes. I don't have to go anywhere and I can do this and feel like I am doing something towards exercise. So I hauled all those out um, on good days. I do them every hour. But like this week, yesterday was a really tough day for me. So I just did one of them. It did help. It lifted my spirits. I don't get to the others in the end of the day and I'm not beating myself up for that. Uh, but just the five minutes, it helped. It put me in a good enough frame of mind that I was able to fulfill a long standing commitment that I had with a friend to help her with a technical um, uh, sort of how to piece of work that she was having with um, a, a marketing campaign. Uh, the next one is acts of kindness. So you've just heard me talk about an act of kindness. You know, often when people talk about acts of kindness, they're like, you know, go and, you know, be in a soup kitchen once a week, or, you know, go and do something worthy. Uh, and again, for me, it's like two things. It's one, when I'm in a spin, I'm not reliable. You can't rely that I'm gonna pitch up between 10 and 11 next Tuesday and serve soup to four people. Like I just, uh, I, you know, because on Tuesday I might wake up and I might just be having one of those times where I'm not gonna get out of bed today. I'm just, you know, it's too much. So what are things that you can do? What are tiny things under five minutes that you can do that are acts of kindness? So my, my, big, my big challenge one to you, it's a 20 minute challenge, not a five chance is a cheat is donate blood you know you know how I, I am a big proponent of that uh, Sandra is watching and she will share my view that uh, it's one of the single biggest things you know wearing a ribbon for people who have cancer and you know shaving off your head you know it doesn't really help the people uh, but donating blood and platelets that's something that's really useful for a cancer patient uh, almost irrespective of what kind of cancer they have um, but that's it that that's too big for me at the moment and also uh, I'm taking a lot of medications that make it quite difficult I would have to stop taking my medications for the day first and when the universe is messing with me that's not an option so uh, what are tiny things that I could do so uh, yesterday I did the school run um, a simple act of kindness was letting people in in congested traffic you know, when the, um, the lanes merge, let the person in, even if it's not their turn to go in, let them in. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that we have, those of you who are watching from South Africa, everyone in South Africa seems to hate taxis. So for those of you who are not South African, taxis are minibuses uh, that, that are sort of like um, informal buses. They stop wherever they feel like. Uh, I see I had no takers for my challenge of who wants to take a taxi ride but uh, you know they, la they laugh and say you can't even call yourself South African if you haven't been in a taxi that's driving over the pavement in congested traffic so they rarely take any cognizance of the laws uh, you know the rules of the road they're routinely <laughs> being fined for driving on the wrong side of the road into incoming traffic uh, so that they can speed up their journeys because most of the drivers are paid by how much money they collect. So typically a taxi is overloaded and breaking all the rules of the road so they can get in more trips during say a rush hour. But the thing about taxis is taxis are good at acts of kindness. If it's congested, it's always the taxi driver who lets me in. It's always the taxi driver who waves me on when I'm in a flap and a hustle. So. That's a really good challenge. Be kind to a taxi driver today. Um, if that feels too much, be kind to a BMW driver. Now, I think that's probably even harder, isn't it? You know, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Shannon recently bought um, a new one. He said he didn't bother going for the optional extra of the indicators, but he did go for the optional extra of the really loud hooter. I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, um, he doesn't use the indicator, of course, but it is there <laughs> uh, before I get sued <laughs> by, by BMW. Um, and then the final kind of piece of first aid 
uh, for when you are feeling really low, when your buttons have been pressed, when the world is not behaving, is gratitude. Now, gratitude <laughs> is, is in itself, I, I can actually see my foot just tapping and, and jiggling. You can see me jiggling as I do this because, you know, people are going the ultimate act of gratitude is to be grateful for the very thing that is getting you down yeah what what's that name that they always use on the on the memes it's like well gloria <laughs> uh, um yeah if you come near me and tell me to be grateful for cancer uh it's not going to end well for either of us you're going to be damaged i'm going to end up in jail for assault uh don't be grateful for things that are shit that's just stupid um but one of the things that we do have in our brain is something called the reticular activation system it's also called the, the cambry effect that's a piece of your brain that uh, searches out information for what we believe to be true so it's called the cambry effect you can see it's been around since cameras were like a thing but the idea is like when you buy a car and you drive out the showroom, you realize everyone else is driving that same car. Uh, and uh, it's so when you believe that's a good car, you look around and you go, oh, everyone else believes it's a good car too. So one of the things that can happen when the world is messing with us is that we begin to believe that the universe is messing with us, that it's an angry, difficult, you know, uh, how did Stephen Hawking put it? I think it was Stephen Hawking said it's a cold and indifferent universe. Uh, and that's, you know, when we, when we believe that, a lot of time we start for looking for data to support our position. And guess what? It is a cold and indifferent universe. So gratitude can be useful to help us reprogram that piece of our brain. I am not saying go and be, can, uh, go and be grateful for the terrible things that have happened in life. Don't be grateful that your boss is a palooka. Don't be grateful that your kid died of cancer or your mom or your granny, uh, you know. So, but if I think about cancer, and I'm sure Sandra will agree with me, there is someone called, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, I want to say Pollyanna, because that's the English version. It's a Greek person called Polizana, I think, who, uh, when Josh was dying, um, was somebody who I think has lost someone to, to cholangiocarcinoma, but also was a scientist and gave uh, enormous amounts of time and uh, information on what we should be asking oncologists, new tests that were coming out for the people who um, were eligible for trials, gave information on new trials that had come out that's someone I'm really, really grateful for, even now, more than a year later. But I'm also grateful, if you can see behind me there, if the sun isn't shining too grateful. We are coming into August in South Africa, and that means Plectranthus is flowering. They have these beautiful purple and mauve and white flowers, and they grow in shady areas. So I have this kind of little forest bit of the garden. Let me see if I can swing a little bit and show you. So you will see this part of my garden is quite treed and uh, hopefully you're seeing one of the types of plectranthus the the tall ones behind with the little star flowers if you can see them they're actually kind of hen and chicken but they're a giant one that grows here indigenously and they have those beautiful star flowers uh, uh, there's a grass is it i, I want to say canthus but it's not uh, someone who knows about the flowers will tell me there's a beautiful grass like lush plant that always has the st same little star flowers and will grow in this area so that's something i can feel grateful i can feel grateful for the fact that people watch these facebook lives um you know guys often you don't put it in the comments i really wish you would by the way um, but i can't tell you how often people come up to me and go you know your facebook made me laugh your facebook made me think it really inspires me um and i feel really grateful for the people who tell me those things um it feels like a little a little way that I could do an act of kindness or a little way that I could have helped today um, even oh thank you whoever I can't see who it was who gave me the like symbol but thank you <laughs> um, uh, it really means a lot to me and I feel immense gratitude oh and a love heart uh, I feel immense gratitude that Facebook 
life exists and I can do these things and that there are people out there who watch them and that helps me reset my day. In fact, before I go, do you want to know a little secret? Just telling you these five micro things that you could do today if the world is conspiring against you. I actually feel better than I did 30 minutes ago before I started this Facebook Live. Yay! So <laughs> even just sharing this information with you has been something that makes me feel better. So remember guys, don't go like for the, you know, the marathon first. Go for the teeny tiny smallest thing you can do. I want to run through the five things again. Pick one today and just do it. Even if you're having the most terrible day, take a break. Take a five minute break. Daydream about what a wonderful things you could do in your life. Where are you going on your next holiday? Who are the people you'd like to, to uh, you know, who is your Ryan Reynolds or in Shannon's case is Sandra Bullock. We have those people that if they ever rang our doorbells like we're out. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is Ryan Reynolds and Janice is Sandra Bullocks. Thanks, Anne. That's so kind. Anne is saying, grateful for you, Penny. You are very special. Thank you, Anne. And you too. You have given me so much love and support and care. I don't know whether the last two years, uh, you know, I don't know what I would have done except get through it, but I don't know how I got through it without people like you who were just there in those moments. I don't know how you managed to be there in those moments, but you've been there. So thank you, Anne. So take a, take a break. The next thing that you can do, oh, Lola, you're here on camera and Lola is a very special person to me. Uh, Lola, you know what you have struggled with over the last five years and I remember you being especially kind to Josh as he went through his cancer journey and especially caring and it was something that he was really grateful for. Oh, and now I'm feeling all emotional and I am really grateful for So. Thank you, Lola. Uh, journal, do Facebook Lives, make a video for yourself. You don't have to send it to anybody. Um, take a video, take a voice note, use technology. Don't use technology if you hate technology. Draw a picture, uh, you know. <laughs> Lola teaches geography. Read a map, Lola, draw a map. <laughs> draw some contours on something. <laughs> or what was it uh, when we visited Hawaii? You know? <laughs> draw a picture of a volcano. <laughs> um, exercise, take five minutes. Uh, and you know, guys, I do the little five minutes of sit-ups, but five minutes can be walking up the stairs instead of taking the lift. Uh, Lola, I know you work in a school when there are bazillions of steps, so you're all right on the exercise front. You're cool. <laughs> I don't know what other exercise you do anyway, but just on a stairs front, uh, you know, uh, my, Chris, he wears, you know, those um, step counters. You know, he makes his 10,000 steps every day just going from classroom to classroom. Exocarnas, let people in on the traffic. If you're in South Africa, be kind to a taxi driver. How hard can it be, guys? Um, and then acts of gratitude. So, my acts of gratitude is doing this today. I'm grateful that Facebook Lives exists. I'm grateful that I could help you today. I'm grateful for you, Anne and Lola and Sandra. And there was somebody else watching too. Who was it right at the beginning? Mel, um, that you are watching. And all the other people are going to watch this later. Uh, doing these things makes my day. And I feel happier than I did 33 minutes uh, oh, 34 minutes now ago. This live was supposed to be five, so oops. Um, but go off, have a good day. Don't let the universe beep with your inner, <laughs> with your inner peace. But if it is, now you have five things that you can choose from uh, to go off and reclaim it. Okay, have a wonderful day. I love you all madly.